the 45 ACP, in the opinion of a lot of people, the best round for self-defense. Uh, they say it's, you know, hard hitting, big, and uh, it'll it'll pretty it's pretty much the only bullet that you're ever going to need to defend your life. Some other people say that the 40 Smith and Wesson is the best bullet for a pistol caliber. Uh, you know, they say it's a lot faster, high pressure, fast, you know, and uh, it'll do the job better than the 45. Some people even say the 9mm will do a better job than the 40 or the 45. Um, you know, and, you know, some up, you know, I've, you've heard a lot of people probably using 22s. What I'm trying to say here, guys, is that the determination on what caliber is the best caliber for you to carry for self-defense is really up to you. Um, it's pretty much, you know, a Chevy versus Ford type thing. Uh, what what's really matters when it comes to defending yourself with a pistol and having it be effective is that you have to be accurate. Shot placement is key. Uh, in my since I've gotten my concealed carry permit about three years ago, I've done a ton of research on which bullets the best. What really matters is it energy? You know, is it the the foot pounds of energy transfer that's important? Is it the penetration characteristics that's important? You know, is it this or that? And really, what I found is that it all comes down to where you put the bullet. So, what I'll say with that is is that whichever round you can afford to practice with the most is going to be the best caliber for you to get. You know, the, the, the 45 is great. You know, it is hard hitting, it is big, it's heavy, you know, but if you can't put it in a spot that's going to uh, vitally injure your, your attacker, then it's really not going to matter. Um, you know, but say maybe you can't maybe you can't handle the forty the recoil of the forty five and you maybe you like the forty or maybe the forty is too snappy and you like the nine, or maybe it comes down to price. Maybe you just can't afford to shoot that forty five. I mean, forty five is like twenty over twenty bucks a box of fifty, whereas nine millimeters is only eleven bucks eleven dollars for a box of fifty. Uh, you know, forty is right in the middle, about sixteen seventeen bucks for a box of fifty, and twenty two. Is extremely cheap. It's still under 20 bucks. You can get a uh, over a 500 round box. And I'm, you know, a lot of people say 22 is not a good option for carry because it's not reliable. And I have to say that I agree with that. I mean, there's so many different calibers that you can get. You can get 380. You can get 32 ACP. You can get 25 ACP. You can get 9 millimeter, 40, 10 millimeter, 45, 44. You know, you can get all kinds of different 357. Uh, there's so many different calibers out there and it really just comes down to what you can shoot well and what you can afford to shoot to practice. Uh, shooting is a skill that will go away within a few weeks. You know, I notice if I don't go shoot and, you know, if I haven't been able to get to the range in like two weeks, I'll get to the range and I'll be, you know, it'll come back fast once you start shooting, but, you know, my first couple shots will be all over the place and you'll be like, what the heck, you know? Last week, I was able to drill the holes right on top of each other. So it's a definitely a perishable skill. So if you if if you want that you know 1911 or whatever to shoot 45, you got to consider that 45 is going to cost you. I mean, even if you reload it, it's going to cost you money. It'll be cheaper, but you know what I mean. It basically comes down to if you get the gun and you find out later that hey man this gun's really expensive to shoot I'm only gonna shoot it every you know once a month or whatever and you know that might not be the best option for you if you can if you I mean you know I know there's other time constraints jobs life work you know but if you know at least once a month you need to get out and shoot for sure but if you can't you know if you're only going out and shooting 50 rounds a month that, I'm, not, I'm gonna say it's probably not enough to be proficient um, so maybe you want to consider a 40 or a 9 millimeter or one of the other calibers that are that are a little bit cheaper that you can shoot more. I mean, a lot of the stuff you can get online for fairly good price, a couple thousand rounds for um, you know under 200 bucks, stuff like that. I know 9 mils out there for you can get a thousand 9 mil for under 200 bucks, and that'll keep you up 
you know, practicing for a while. But, you know, basically, just, and if you can get to a range where you can uh, rent a handgun in different calibers, maybe you could, that'll help you decide what caliber you like the best. I mean, some people are really sensitive to recoil. Some people are really sensitive to other things, you know, the gun, the grip, how it's, how the gun's set up. So it'd be good to, you know, maybe while you're deciding which handgun you want to get, try to decide also what caliber you want to get. Um, I really think in today's, with today's modern technology, even the 9mm hits hard. I mean, I know there's 9mm out there, the plus P, the 124 grain plus P, it hits almost as hard as a 45 in standard pressure. Um, so, and, you know, there's tons of ammo testing videos out there. I would put some ammo testing videos out, but honestly, I don't have anywhere to test ammo uh, anymore over here on the East Coast. Uh, the, the ranges are really stringent on the rules and all that and so if I do get a, a place where I can test some ammo I will um, a few that I tested before this is a uh, federal HST 40 caliber I shot this into some water jugs from about seven yards it penetrated uh, almost all four water jugs uh, and came out in this beautiful flower of death design and uh, I you know Basically, the self-defense rounds that I carry, this is a Winchester Ranger T, and uh, it, I think it did the same. It didn't expand as much, but uh, basically the defense rounds that I like is the HST, um, the Winchester Ranger T, and the Spear Gold Dot. Uh, I feel that in a civilian application having your an expanding hollow point that's going to expand big like this HST is really key because you don't want that bullet over penetrating and maybe putting some innocent bystanders uh, you know compromising their life by your bullet going through your your intended target uh, so you know and it'll cause a lot of damage I don't you know I don't think it'll be a one-stop shot but it'll definitely uh, cause some damage inside but, you know, basically back to the point of the video is that the best handgun caliber that you can get is the one that you can shoot the fastest, the most accurately, and the one that you can afford to shoot often. So, it's basically, hopefully I've helped you out maybe with uh, some considerations. And I know some people disagree with me. I used to be the guy that was like, yep, 45. That's all I'm ever going to carry. And uh, as I kind of got more educated on the subject I now you know carry pretty much just a 9mm car PM9 and I still like to carry I still like the 40 you know I have 40s and 9s I don't have any 45s anymore uh, I'd still like to get one but as far as carrying goes uh, I just carry a 9 I mean I know that you know you're gonna have to have two or more shots to really to really put somebody down so you know when it comes to that it really doesn't matter what you have as long as you can shoot it fast hit your target and uh, be able to practice thanks for watching